Right, brilliant. Well, thank you, Don, for uh, chatting to me today as a long, long, long term um, Slade fan. So it's a great. That's great right. Yeah, that, that thanks for me. making contact, Darren. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. I um, want to talk firstly about the uh, the new single, Let There Be Drums, the yeah. uh, the cover of the uh, the old Sandy Nelson instrumental yeah. that was uh, released just last week. It's already made quite a splash, I believe. Can you just say it, a bit it, about how that all came about? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Daniel. I mean, it's, it's funny how these things stick with you. It's before I was actually playing drums. It was like in my youth club days, you know, when it was released, first released in 61. So I'd be 14, 15 then. And it was like the youth club, you know, we, you know, we used to play, play table tennis. So we used to have the, the old Danzet um, record player. And um, some of the older members of the club, they, they brought this record down and, and it, it just freaked me out. I'd, I'd never heard a drumming record before, you know, like a solo, just a drumming record, you know, sort of. And I thought, blah, I mean, this is this is incredible, you know. And uh, it sort of stuck with me. Were you already uh, drumming by then? Did you? No, no, I no. no. So that's what got you into the drums then. Oh, well, maybe, but I was playing drums in the Boy Scouts. Yes, I knew but, that. Uh, I knew that. Yeah, that's also. But um, it just it just freaked me. It just floored me when I heard it because I'd never heard any uh, like a drumming record before. And um, anyway, sort of. It's always been in the back of my mind. And then um, Craig Fenny, who was um, uh, the bass player with Slave, when we went back on the road in uh, 91, 92, me, me and him, we kept on talking about it. You know, we came up in conversation. I think it was, I think it was Craig who brought it up in conversation. And I said, I said, actually, Craig, because um, I actually, what I did, just jumping the gun there a bit, Darren, what I did, I recorded drums in um was it, do you remember that um that solo artist John Louis he had a couple of hits oh yeah 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 he the always, Christmas one didn't he find me the kitchen in part a party yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. the don't yeah. stop the cavalry well yeah. he's got a um like a 48 track recording studio at his house and he invited me down and um and I started playing around and and I recorded uh, quite a few uh, like drum drum tracks to it and when Craig like I said when Craig brought it up I said, actually, Craig, I have got some recordings of the drum tracks, you know. I said, and we, you know, because the way technology has gone, gone sky high in these last yeah, few yeah. years, we just, um, I've got the old sort of, you know, sort of 24 inch uh, master tapes and have them transferred uh, digitally. And, um, and, we, and then it was Craig's idea that came up and says, um, why don't we sort of try and get lots of guest drummers? You know, let's throw some names in between us and um, and, and do like a, a cover version. I said, that's a great idea. And, and we started throwing names around and, and I mentioned um, sort of, um, what's his name from the shadows, you know, sort of Brian, oh, Brian Bennett. Bennett. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because what it is, I'm just jumping the gun here a bit down, sort of about three or four times a year, about 35, 40 of us have a lunch in London. Oh, wow. Uh, like musicians, actors, and people like yeah, that, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and Brian's always there, so we've made contact like that, and uh, and I and I asked him, and he said, and he says straight away, no problem, I will do it, uh, and the idea was, um, for Darren, was for them to sort of record about about fifteen seconds sort of thing, and also film it so we could put it all together. Like as a like a montage type thing, and there was Beth Bevan from originally from the Move ELO, and he yep. did a stint with Black Sabbath. I really and that, everybody yeah. was so gracious, and because we said we, we, then we decided to to um, donate all this to charity, like for the uh, all the road crews, technicians who have really suffered with this, uh, you know, sort of pandemic sort yeah, of yeah. Uh, catastrophe, and. Um, it just came together really quickly, Darren. You know, so they, were, they all, you know, put that all in and, and got the, you know, got themselves filmed while recording and sent it to us, and we just put it all together and uh, we just uh, see what happens with it, mate. Well, it's a great, it's a great track and it's a great cause. So let's hope it's going to be a real, yeah, real yeah, success. I, mean, so, yeah. I don't think people yeah. really realise the work that these guys do. These, I mean, without these guys, the show wouldn't go on. 
yeah uh, hopefully when things do go back to normal we start to appreciate them more yeah. as like ordinary oh, punters yeah, when, you know. can you see can you see light at the end of the tunnel yet i think uh, i think there probably be the, the, there are a few concerts sort of um in the offing sort of thing so we're just gonna have to wait and see darren yeah yeah no i've got a few things booked so um, i'm hoping yeah. that we start to yeah. see gigs again in the second half of the year and um, I mean, it's been quite a, a exciting time for you because you formed the Don Powell Band yeah. last year. You had the um, project with Susie Quattro and Andy Scott. Yeah, that, a couple that was of years ago, thing. there seems to be a burst of um, of new 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 projects that you're involved in these yeah. days. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been pretty lucky, really, Dad. I mean, the Susie Quattro and Andy Scott one was uh, was quite nice because what it was, there was Slade, Sweet, and Susie Quattro Band did a few shows together. And um, Susie, Andy, and myself were sitting in the, the hotel restaurant one day, and, and it was uh, Andy Scott who said, "Now this will make a good band." And, so, and everybody sort of, "Yeah, I wonder, yeah. I wonder." And we sort of kept on mentioning it, and it came about. Said, "Let's get together and do some recordings." So what we did, we went down to Peter Gabriel's place. He's got a, a massive studio complex down the West Country sort of thing. And uh, we went down there, you sort of, you live there and you record, you know, sort of live, eat and record there. And, and that's, uh, that's where we did the album, really. We had a great time doing it. And then it sort of, uh, it got released by Sony in, in Australia and it charted. So, so we, we went over and toured there. I mean, because Susie Quattro, what we did, Susie Quattro goes there every year anyway, and she has done for the last sort of 30 yeah, years. Yeah. And um, we were the opening act. There was uh, Andy, Susie, and myself were the opening act. And we had, uh, it was a great tour. And it helped, it helped with the album, really, Darren. Yeah, but definitely. So all these new things that you've been doing, was there a feeling, was it starting to get a little bit frustrating, all those? Because I know you went out with Dave Hill for um, a good, you know, good nearly 30, 20 odd years, wasn't it? After the original Slade. Was it starting to get a bit frustrating just going out and playing the um, playing the hits? Were you starting to feel that you wanted to do some new things? Yeah, in a way, yes. I mean, apart from uh, doing uh, doing the Slay material with, with uh, Dave Hill, I mean, but that's what people wanted to see, don't Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. sort of, it's like, well, I think with any band that has uh, uh, an amount of success, I mean, it's hard to get out of that uh, hole that you dig yourself into, you know. I mean, we had it with the original lineup with Noddy and Jim, you know, sort of, um, you know, what do we play or what do we leave out, you know, sort of thing. It, it's, it, it's, it's a hard decision or a hard thing to try and, um, you know, sort of decide, you know, like the four years, you, you always, everybody's got different ideas or different choices, you know, but uh, you all have to try and try and work out or find out what the audience want, really, you know, sort of thing. But... Um, I suppose it was really, I and mean, we come to an end of, and in a way, because Nod didn't want, Noddy Holdy didn't want to tour anymore, and um, so it was just a matter of looking for things. And Dave and myself are um, still keen on touring, which we did. And actually, it was great because we went to a lot of territories, like places like Russia and the old Eastern Bloc, which we couldn't do in the seventies. We, I mean, we have to, we yeah, have to, the world opened up more, I suppose. Yeah, we have, we have some great shows in Russia. Yeah, Incredible, yeah. you know, really. Yeah, yeah. It's not until you go there until you realise how big that place is. I mean, yeah, we, and you were massive there, but at the time you could never really get to... No, uh, we couldn't get do it. I mean, there's there. no record. We hadn't, hadn't got a clue what was going on release-wise, you know, because, the, because for obvious reasons. And um, it's amazing when you realise we flew from Moscow to Vladivostok on the East Coast. This is like one country, like, like 12, 13 hours. That's like flying London, Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. But we've had some great times there, Darren. Yes, no, no, I, I mean, I, I only saw the original band three times because I was quite, oh, really? quite young. Oh, nice. So I saw the original band three times in the early 80s. Okay. As a teenager. Um, but then, uh, yes, yeah, saw you and Dave many, many times. Um, after that, but there the, the seemed to be a time only a sort of year or so ago when it all seemed to be going wrong for you. You had the email sacking you from 
the yeah. heel that was after your serious tendon injury which put you yeah. out of action for a bit and then to cap it all after that you had a stroke it all seemed to be going wrong for you yeah it, it was it was a weird thing it sort of um, there's no reasoning for it you know i mean with the stroke i mean it was just strange i was i was here at home well we all were here at home and i was uh, just watching tv and i went to sort of grab my cup of tea and, and i couldn't get the cup you know, I couldn't uh, yeah, grab the yeah. cup or I couldn't hold the cup. And it's weird. And I had to hold my hand. And then I found, um, I went, I came downstairs to uh, see, speak to my wife. And it was a problem coming down the stairs. And luckily, our daughter is, a, is a, a doctor. And she says, you've had a stroke. You need to go to the hospital. And uh, my, my speech is a bit sort of, um, yeah, bl yeah, blurred sort of thing. But... Uh, I, I thought mean, that was yeah. just the Wolverhampton accent. No, all, 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 all it was going to be my drinking days. That would, that would, have, been, that would have been normal today. I thought if it's been my drinking days, I would understand. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but that's all gone. But so we just sent for an ambulance, and they and they hooked me up to some machines in the ambulance, and they said you've had a stroke. We've got to take you to a hospital. You know, so yeah. and that's what it was. It was just a just a small stroke, and I was in the hospital. Um, luckily, it was our daughter who said, you know, being a doctor, if you were my husband, I would send I would send you to the hospital. Anyway, it was all sorted out, and everything was okay. I mean, but apparently, it uh, it wasn't that serious, but it was it, it was. It, but I'm glad I sort of um, took attention. advice took advice yeah, yeah. from it. You know, but yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, everything's okay. Good. I mean, in that year when, you know, there was like a 12 month period where just everything seemed to be going wrong for you. There was the yeah. Dave Hill sacking sort of thing. Well, there was your tendon, then there was the Dave Hill yeah, thing. And then, then there was your stroke. Was, was there a time when you just thought about packing it all in and, no, and knocking no, it on I, the head? I, or did you stay positive? Were you always no, positive? No, I was, I was very, very positive. Actually, that, that came from my wife as well, um, Darren. My wife, Hannah, she was, she was great, you know. Um, you know, sort of, I've got, like, what my practice kit upstairs, and I, she made me get on that. She said, oh, she just kept, I love to hear you play it up there. So I got, and that was okay, actually. I mean, it was strange. I mean, there was no problem playing drums or anything. And... Um, it was just a matter of sort of this little minor stroke, if you like, happened, and uh, and that was it. I'm on I'm on I'm on uh, tablets for the rest of my life, but um, but apparently that that's that's just like the norm these days. You know, I'm really with with, with well, like ninety looking, percent of the, of the population. But it's it, it's okay. I mean, sort of, it was a bit bit scary at the time because, like I said, when I couldn't pick the cup up. You know, and I've, I've got no feeling, and, and of course you, you you don't know what to think. You know, you, you don't think of a stroke or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but there you go, and uh, yeah, and I mean the thing is, even it, there's no reason for it when you think about it, Dan, because I go to the fitness center every morning anyway, and I did before the stroke, so you know, sod's law, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. Like I said, there's no reason for it, you know. The, the, uh, the, these things just happen, but clearly yeah. you, you stayed positive and focused yeah, on that, doing that's the, what doing the next, that, that taking on the next challenges in life. She, she, she kept me positive and it was great. Right. And um, a, a high point last year as well must have been really nice for you after all these years seeing um, Slade back in the album charts. With, yeah, with, incredible. Uh, I mean, you see, you, you see that. I, I look at the CD and I thought, blimey, it, it ain't bad, is it? You know, so, so there's a nice, nice bit of history there. But and also you think, you know, like you said, it went back in the charts. And I thought, I thought everybody had got this stuff, you know. I thought, how, how, much, how, how much further can it go, you know? I mean, it is incredible, but... Um, I tell you what, people always talk about. We we call it that song, you know, the, the Christmas song. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sort of, no matter where we go around the world, no matter what time of year, they want to hear that song. But do you think this has helped sort of just broaden people's sort of memories and recollections of the band now? So it's not just. I mean, that compilation must have helped. As well, well that's I, I is, so. you know, reminding I, I, people it wasn't just a Christmas. I think, song. I think the general comment I've I've been getting, Darren, is that um, people say, "Oh, I didn't realise you had so many hits." 
Oh, I forgot you had that one. Oh, yeah, that one, that one, yeah, oh, and that one. I mean, I, I did myself as well. You know, I, was, <laughs> I was looking to, wow, I forgot about that, you know. So it's it's a it's nice compliments and it's, you know, and, and it's nice, a nice bit of history on, on the CD, really. And it's nice, it's good. Uh, uh, absolutely wonderful, yeah, yeah. And I mean, the the, the hit, the, the, the hit that really sort of got everything going for me in terms of um, Slade, because... I was like six or seven when Come On, Feel The Noise and stuff okay. came out. So I was more into the Wombles, really, than Slade. Oh, yeah. then. But yeah. by the time I was 14 and We'll Bring The House Down oh, came right. out, that was your big comeback single. That was the one for me. That's the one that really turned me into a that's, sort of lifelong that, that, that Slade fan. I'll tell you, you know, we think that obviously with Nod's lyrics, you know, that's how it came about. If you, It's, it's all about what a, a concert about, yeah, yeah. you know. And what we did when we were recording that, I remember I just went to the toilet. I just made a, a loud cough. And I thought, oh, it's a nice echo in here. And I thought, I wonder, I wonder if we could put the drums in here, you know, sort of thing. Because it was all, all you know, the toilet was all, all tile room with everything. And it was like a thunderous sound in the toilet. Absolutely incredible. But we never thought. It was halfway through this incredible take. And the automatic flush went off. We, we, we forgot all about that. And we had to, I forgot, oh shit, you know, we had to turn the water off, you know. It's those things you don't think about, you know. But you got the echo, you don't want to talk. It was, it was a great comeback record, that was. It, it, it was a, a nice record to come back with, actually. Yeah, and that, that really, I mean, it must be a, it must be a brilliant record for a drummer as well, that one. Yeah, the it's, drums it's, are it's, so it's, 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 it's great to play on stage, uh, stage Darren, you know, because the thing is, is I can just keep on playing while the other guy is, you know, just sort of talk to the audience or just mess around and all that kind of thing. And it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great stage song, especially for, for me anyway. Which, yeah. which, as a drummer, which is your favourite Slade song to play? Ooh, uh, there's a couple, really. I mean, uh, come on, feel the noise. I've, I've, I've always yeah. loved playing. And uh, my oh my. That's in the oh back yeah, because you come in the drum. Yeah, you know, when it, it fades down if, and you come if, back if in with the drums. If you listen to that, it's a, basically at the start, it's just bass drum and snare drum. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I come in with the drum fills afterwards, you know, yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, it was a great, a great, a great song to play to, to and also sort of come on, feel the noise is one of my favourites as well. Uh, definitely, that would be that would be yeah. that would be one of my. But it's incredible. There's another one when you think, Darren. Um, we released that in the states when in the same time in '73, and it never saw the light of day. Nothing. You know, and then Quiet Riot recorded, and, and it goes to number one. Mm. <laughs> you know, and then gave your career a boost, because then you started no, having hits for the first time ever in America as well. That, right? That's what happened there. It gave us uh, all these record companies that were after us. And um, we, we, we signed with CBS, and uh, an MTV had just started as well then, Darren, which helped a lot. Uh, the video of um, that was on... on um, on MTV all the, the time. The Run Runaway video. Run, yeah, the yeah. Run Runaway was released first because we used that like, castle as the backdrop. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's that? And of course, like typical Americans, I thought that's where we lived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Slade's Castle. <laughs> they, they, they thought it was our house. You know? That's <laughs> even more bizarre than Vic Reeves, really. No, we, 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 we just played along with that one. <laughs> so it's quite good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Every, every rock band in Britain has their own castle. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And if we can go back to the very, very early days of um, of Slade now, in, in the early days, you actually wrote quite a bit for um, Slade at the, yeah. um, at the the start. But then when the um, when the hit started coming, you um, you stopped writing. I think that's a bit of a shame, personally, because while I could see your lyrics were, were not the, the yeah, sort well, of the hit single is... material, I thought for album tracks, they would have been perfect. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I started writing again as well, but the thing is, is when Nolly Holes and, and Jim Lee started, I mean, they, they were doing it like that, it was, it, it's coming like that, and I thought just let them come, coming out with the hits, and it was so easy for them, Darren, so just let them carry on with it. Oh, right, you, you know, just thought, let, let, let them get on with it. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't up, actually tell you, they, they didn't tell you to stop writing no, or, no, or no, discourage like you. That. Just that they, they, just they were coming up with with this great great material, you know. So I just thought let them carry on with it. They've they've got the they've got the formula now, 
you know, so uh, great, just let them do it. And I've been starting writing again over the last few years with some of the solos things I've been doing, you know, sort of thing, you know, yeah. So it's, uh, and we got to, uh, we just got our fingers crossed with, with the Don Powell van, really, when we start doing some more recordings, you know. But I mean, then again, Darren, it's amazing how technology's changed because of this pandemic crap, you know, sort of, uh, I haven't been able to travel, but the rest of the guys have been recording stuff in England and sending the files to me. And I just go into the studio I use over here and put the drums on and send it back. You know, it's so you not can, it, yeah. it's not the same as all being in the studio at the same time because there's that there's that rapport that you have mm. between yourself when you're sort of you know playing together. But it's it, it's at least we can do something while this is going on around us, you know. Oh, absolutely, it's something something really positive to um to focus on. Yes, and oh, there's a guy there's a guy in Australia that I met when we toured there with Angie and Susie a few years ago. And he's doing some solo stuff and he asked me to play drums on it. I said, yeah. And he's doing the same. He's sending the files from Australia. I'll, I'm waiting for them. And I want to put drums on and send you back. <laughs> so so can we it. expect an album from the Don Pell band then? Is oh, yes, for yeah. sure. For sure. When, when, when? Well, I when, mean, hope, hopefully, I mean, the, the, the um, we're all writing stuff to, you know, be, 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 be all of us, you know, and, uh, um, as soon as possible, really, Dan. I mean, at the moment, with this pandemic, like I said, at least we can they can send me material. I can put drums on and send it back, you know. But um, it'll be nice when we can all get in the studio together at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got a great, great bunch Everyone's of together. guys, and you know, great bunch of guys, and it's great, they're great fun to be with. We only um, we only had two rehearsals together when before all this <laughs> <in> lockdown. <laughs> really? <came. laughs> You so, know, so you know each other better on Zoom um, yeah, exactly. than, than you do in real life. <laughs> it is. It's, it's strange, it is. Although, obviously, Craig, you and Craig go back many years. Craig, so. we, we go back even before when he was when, when we went back on the road, Dave and myself, and yeah. Craig was in the band. I've known Craig before then. Ah, right, OK. You know, so it's, it's not like we're total, we were total strangers, yeah, yeah. you know, so, yeah, that was good. Excellent. And... Um, Still just on, on, on Slade, I'm not going to dwell on the, the, the Dave Hill thing, but do you still hear from the other two members um, of, I, um, of the band, yeah, Robbie I mean, and Jim? Well, yeah, I mean, occasionally we speak, and like I said, um, we got one coming up in, in September. There's about 35, 40 of uh, 40 us have a lunch together in London. There's like uh, musicians, drummers, and, and it's great. There's like Bruce Wells from The Shadows and Brian Bennett, and there's... I mean, there's Clem Katina. I don't know whether you know of oh, him. Oh, yes. Now. Big session player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, I mean, he's such an unassuming guy, you know, because he, he started with Telstar with the Tornado. That's how it started with him. And he, he went into, like, studio work. You know, he's played drums on over 200 hit records, 55 number ones he's played drums on. That's more than yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, you've not done too bad for playing <laughs> no, but I mean, number one. I mean, the thing is, when you're talking to, to, to Clem, you know, Darren, you talk about records, uh, yeah, I played drums on that. Yeah, I did that one as well. Yeah, and that one. He was telling us, I mean, he never knew where he was going in those days. He'd have a contact, he'd go to, go to be in so-and-so studio. He said, uh, on one day, he did Lily the Pink in the morning by Scaffold, and in the afternoon, he, he packed his drums away, he went to Decker Studios and then he did, uh, he did It's Not Unusual by Tom Jones. So he did he did two number ones in one day yeah. and, and, he, and he got something like 60 quid. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> but that's what it was then. You know? Yeah, it's more the legacy than the money. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. He's, I mean, got... He's, he's got some great stories. You know? I'm just yeah. when you're talking to Bruce Welsh as well, because I didn't, I asked him because I didn't know well, the Cliff and the Shadows actually toured America, but they did back in the very early 60s. They had all those package things with people like Dean on the Belmonts, you know, you know sort of yep. all, all, uh, all those kind of people. But then again, traveling on a Greyhound bus, no private jets then. He was just traveling on the bus, you know, sort of thing. But uh, no, it, it's great talking to those people. I mean, the, those people are really, um, I look up to those people. Fab, fab. And, and Noddy and Jim, do you still have a... Well, not, what yeah. I was about to say, Nod's always at the lunches. Oh, so not yeah. yeah. So you keep up with yeah. Nod. 
So I, I speak, I speak because Jim's not like Jim. Jim never bothers with email or mobile phones yeah, or yeah. anything like that. So he has like, spoken to me. I did interview Jim a couple of years. Oh, good. Well, yeah. I um. And know, he, he, I, he's very kindly of you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I make uh, I make contact him through his brother now. His brother's on email, so I make contact right, right. Back through his brother. You know, but uh, now we sort of I'll see if the lunch goes ahead in uh, September, Darren. I'll still see not there. Fantastic. But we always have a good laugh. You know, it's, yeah, we, yeah, sort of. Yeah. The thing is, no one knows what we're talking about. We just on our own, just talking and killing ourselves laughing. You know, no one knows what we're talking about. You know, but uh, no. So, uh, well, when you think when we've been together for so long, you know, we, we have, like I've always said, uh, I probably knew the rest of the not Dave and Jim. I probably knew them better than I know my brother. Yeah, because you, know, you just saw more of them. Yeah, well, yeah. I was just you just uh, in the back of the van and just yeah. sharing bags of chips and things like that. You know, I mean, sort of. I mean, we went through so much together, really, and uh, that can that can never go away. I'm pleased. That's a that's a, a really nice yeah nice note to 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 end the the sort of Slade memories on. And um, just looking to the future now, then what next for the uh, for the Don Powell band? Well, well, like I said, we're all, all sort of, it's all frozen with this pandemic that's going on. But but hopefully, like, as, you, as you know, because of the recording, at least we can still do some recordings. Like like I said, they send the files to me, I'll put drums on and send it back. So hopefully, when all this clears, we can get, to, we only had two rehearsals together before all this started. So hopefully we can just get things sorted when all this pandemic stuff's done. And, and you are planning a tour then? When well, we would like to. Been... We'll see. We'll yeah. see how, how, yeah. it's all, how it's all sort of uh, channels out, really. So it'll be nice. That's because brilliant. They'll, 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 it'll be the usual thing that they'll, they'll be they'll be asking for that song. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Well, presumably, are you going to do a mix of? New material and um, I, I, well, yeah, I, suppose, I suppose we'll have to do because the because um, one one of the guitarists is Bob Wilson from Steve Gibbons band, so we've we've, we've been we started rehearsing some of the Steve Gibbons stuff as well, you know. So um, there's a lot of material to choose from, Darren. Yeah, yeah, you and know, it's nice to be, okay. be able to to mix yeah. it up like that in that way. Yeah.